morning I'm gonna use the sunscreen SVR that I got on Look Fantastic. I've been trying out a lot of different chemical sunscreens for you guys from Europe. Pretty light in consistency. It's not greasy or shiny either. But it's also really moisturizing, like, it almost has the consistency of like, Cicaplast Balm, a little lighter than that though, actually. guys I'm on my way out to run some errands and I just finished filming a video for you guys about dilated pour a liner but you know another cause which is you know kind of like a massive blackhead if you miss the video but another common reason for blackheads something called uh, Aubrey rock shoe it's basically uh, enlarged pores due to background sun damage and it's most often in, seen in smokers yeah, it's most often seen in smokers. It's a combination of sun damage and the damage from smoking. Just really annihilates the surrounding supportive structure of the uh, of the uh, follicle. So you get dilation, just refills and refills. Um, now another blackhead-like condition is called a nevus comedonicus. It's basically a birthmark of a collection of dilated pores. Not common, but that is another reason for for large blackheads. And then uh, people with the uh, condition discoid lupus, um, that actually, they get these skin lesions that have like enlarged pores throughout them. It's called follicular plugging is what you see under the microscope. But the lesions themselves, they're like inflamed, have like a reddish border, and they are described as like carpet tack. They then go on to scar. That, as a matter of fact, that is what Seal had, has had. He's still alive. And if left untreated, it will form, it, it will scar. It could affect the scalp as well as cause of hair loss, scarring hair loss, lupus, cutaneous lupus. See, lupus. It's kind of a confusing diagnosis term because there are a lot of different like forms of lupus, forms of lupus in the skin, and then there's systemic lupus. And the forms in the skin can go along with the, system the systemic version. The systemic form has like, you know, you can go on to develop joint problems, problems with the blood cell count getting too low. People with lupus are really sensitive to the sun as well, and they have to be exercise aggressive UV protection because UV exposure actually can elicit their skin symptoms, and the inflammation gets so bad it can precipitate systemic symptoms as well. But there are a lot of different forms of lupus in the skin. There's like lupus that blisters, called bullous lupus, neonatal lupus in babies. It's an autoimmune disease. So I'm here in Sprouts, and I guess the electricity went out, so all we have is the glow of the uh, frozen pizza aisle. <laughs> Anyways, I came in here to get coffee. I actually want to grind, use their bean grinder. Oh, miracle. Did you see what you guys did? Made the power come back on. Ooh, maca root. I get distracted in here. I don't think I've ever had maca root before, but I have had kamu kamu. I really like this Cuvee, the West Pole one. I've gotten that one from Trade Coffee before, but I think I might go with Stumptown. Should I do Hairbender? That sounds good. Although I don't know how I feel about citrus, but this sounds good. Creamy and caramel. Not cheap, but YOLO. <laughs> 
this is what I'm currently drinking, the Highlander Grog. It's pretty, it's one of my favorites. It's a good one, it's on sale. Maybe I should just get that, but I really wanna try this because in one of my vlogs, one of you guys commented that it was really good. Well, that was fun grinding the beans. I have high hopes for this coffee. Hopefully it doesn't let me down. All right, we're about to go out the side of Sprouts that has the worst. It's like really almost impossible to not scrape the bottom of your car on this thing. Going really slowly. All right, made it out. <laughs> wasn't too crowded in there. I love that Sprouts. They always have a good selection. I get tempted to wander around in there because they always have good finds and what have you. All right, so I'm back. And I mentioned this the other week. I ordered these on Amazon, these little brown glass jars. I think they're what like people actually make candles in. Anyways, I washed them so they're clean. I got them for like all of my spirulina powder since I've really got into that lately. Here's one thing I've been putting in my smoothies, moringa powder. It kind of has like, it kind of almost tastes like bananas. Have you ever had, had it? Let me know in the comments. But yeah, these little bags are just kind of getting out of control. These are really nice though. That's what it looks like. It's just like a green powder. I get this on iHerb. You can bake with it apparently according to the, the package. This smoothie recipe sounds really good. You take a teaspoon of the moringa powder, a cup of coconut water, a cup of pineapple and a banana and blend it all together. Yum. I thought these would be good too for like herbs that I buy in bulk. All right, so there's the moringa powder. So I've really been into this blue spirulina primarily for the vibrant color that it imparts to my vanilla smoothies. It It's really fun. But I hate this package because it comes with like a little scoop inside. This is a new one. It comes with a little scoop inside and in order to reach in there and get the scoop, you get the blue powder all over your fingers. It makes a mess. That's why there's always like spirulina under my nails. It's it gets it all over everything. Yeah, see it comes with it comes with this little spatula, but in this little bag, it gets covered in the blue powder and makes a mess. But it fits perfectly down in there, so that's better. Yeah, I kind of got the idea to make like a little smoothie bar station because I have my blender over there, but then I have all these little different powders that I put in my smoothie and stuff. So like I have this big bag from Costco of chia seeds and it's kind of a pain to get in and out of. So I'm just gonna decant some of the chia seeds into one of these too. That way I don't always have to be going in and out of this bag. Recently I bought chlorella too. So I've been doing the spirulina, but I wanted to mix in chlorella as well. All right, so I put them over here by my blender. This is my blend tech and I love it. Um, I've had it for I think two years now. Uh, it's what I use to make my smoothies. But recently I bought a damper 
Tamper Damper. I got it on Amazon and it has been a game changer because it allows you to make a thicker smoothie. You basically just insert this in and as it's blending, it makes sure that the ice chunks get blended, you know, that they kind of get around the blades and they don't heap up on top and it stop. If you've ever had that happen, it's annoying. But this came with this cool spatula. It's called a blender stick. Um, it's like kind of angled for scooping out. So that's gonna be perfect because I like making nut butters in this. And a lot of times this stuff kind of gets stuck in the edges. So this will be great for that. Yeah, I got that on Amazon and it came really quickly. I ordered it like on a Sunday and it came the following Monday. It was really fast shipping. Well, hey guys, I just got out of the shower and I'm gonna put a little Vaseline on my eyelids. I get questions about doing this from time to time. Like, doesn't it run into your eyes and clog up like the little oil glands that line your eyelids? Can't that, you know, aggravate, cause a little styes? I just put a very small amount, like not a big glob or anything. And I actually start up at my brow bone. I put the majority of it there and then I just skim a little bit down and thicker isn't necessarily necessary or better. But when I don't do this, I do find that my upper eyelids do get easily irritated from like the tretinoin and stuff. So that can really help cut down on dryness and irritation around the eyelids. But yeah, I don't actually put it on the eyelid itself. I don't actually put it like around the lash line or anything. So last night I did not shampoo my hair. I just used, I've been loving this. It's a hair attached to I've been loving this uh, shower cap, shower cap. It's really quiet and I, I can't stand the sound of like water beating down on the shower cap. Anyway, so I used this last night and I decided to try this brush again since my hair today had a little bit more oil in it than it typically does since for the most part I do shampoo my hair on a daily basis. But anyways, it did not last night. And I honestly did notice that there was a lot less static with this new brush today. So that's a little update on that. But And I've kind of finished this AHA Jelly Cleanser from Coco Kind. I don't know. Overall, I was not such a fan of this because I found that First of all, it wasn't like magical or anything. And second of all, the consistency, I ended up losing a lot of product just in transferring from my hands to my face. And it kind of comes out in large chunks as opposed to like a small piece. It's hard to get like a small amount out. So I didn't care for that aspect of this. It was just, I don't know. I think for this type of product, if they had it maybe in a, some kind of a pump package, it would be better for dispersing it. But yeah, this time of year, you know, people's face tends to get red and dry more easily because of the heaters. Man, they really do dry out your skin quite a bit. And honestly, some things that people just don't think about that can be affecting the your skin and causing dryness sensitivity is if you take medications by mouth, a lot of medications can make your skin a lot more sensitive. Antibiotics. Um, you know, medications you might take from over the counter for headaches, uh, they're called non, you know, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications. They can make you a little sensitive to the sun and cause sensitivity, make your skin feel, you know, burning, sting, stinging when you put products on. I said I was going to get my hair trimmed in December. Did I do it? No. And I keep meaning to make an appointment because my hair is getting long again. Man, that eye restore, I swear, I have much less shedding I, and I attribute it to the eye restore for sure. And I was noticing, I've been parting my hair in the middle, which I'm not such a fan of, but I was noticing my middle part is a lot narrower than it used to be. I don't know if that's all in my head, but I was noticing that when I was editing my videos the other day and I want to say it's the eye restore. I mean, I've been using that thing for a couple of years now and it's definitely made a difference in the thickness and density of my hair. I mean, I didn't really have noticeable thinning hair or anything, but I have definitely seen an improvement in hair density and just looking at video footage, I have seen that my middle part is a lot narrower. Yeah, the Iris for Professional Hair Regrowth System, you know, it's definitely something that can help a lot if you are dealing with pattern hair loss. 
because it helps improve circulation into the scalp and it also helps with kind of you know stimulating some of those quiet follicle cells to kind of wake back up and get back into the growing phase and for some people minoxidil applied to the scalp it doesn't work because well either they can't keep up with it because it's too drying and irritating but some people actually don't have sufficient uh, activity of this enzyme, there's an enzyme that has to convert minoxidil to its active form, and that's in the follicle. Some people, they just don't have the levels of that. It's thought needed to get minoxidil to actually work. Now, that being said, oral minoxidil, low dose oral minoxidil is definitely showing more and more promise for safety and efficacy as a treatment for pattern hair loss, especially in people who have not responded to topical minoxidil um, well, so that is another option. I have a video where I talk more about that. So definitely check that out if you're interested. But yeah, um, at low, low doses, because minoxidil, it is a blood pressure pill. So the concern has always been that, you know, it could cause leg swelling and make people dizzy. But at really low doses, it can help with hair, hair growth. I'm telling you, when it comes to medications, it is not the medication. It's well, I mean, it is a medication, but the dosage makes a huge difference. Like for example, when we're talking about treating acne with spironolactone, that's another blood pressure medication. But at the doses that we use at very low doses for treating acne, and a lot of the side effects that you can run into with treating blood pressure with that, you're not gonna run into with acne, or they're gonna be very, very mild. This is a diuretic. And most of the side effects with spironolactone, they're pretty mild and they get better after a few months. And so, you know, that's another example. Anyways, you guys, I'm gonna wrap up the vlog here. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.